Uh, good morning, I'm Stephen Cook with Cook Saw Manufacturing. Uh, we're continuing our series on uh, how to prolong blade life. And uh, we're kind of getting cranked up here this morning, so you may hear some uh, sounds and, and trucks in the background. We had to start early, and it's, it's mid-July, and uh, we really getting hot during the day, so we want to start early here. And we've got trucks coming in and things, but uh, we'll work with that. I wanted to talk about roller guides. I've talked about roller guides and setups in other videos, but I want to talk today specifically about prolonging uh, blade life. Roller guides, of course, are, are right here, and they're sitting on the on the band blade. So it's real important. Something that we do is we take these roller guides and we put them on a shaft, and we we touch them up after they're heat treated. So these are very hard, uh, and they're they're ground true uh, after. Uh, after they're heat treated so that we get a good uh, perfect roundness so that when we put it on this shaft it's running true and the reason that is they're, they're turning it at high rates of speed so what happens even if you've got ten thousandths bump as this thing is spinning and the blades going under it it's bumping pop, 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 pop. it's hitting it very fast and uh, so that's important um, to, to have one that's in round we have seen that uh, alone it's like a hammering action and if you can get the idea, we used to hammer circle saw blades uh, years ago when, we were, when there were more circle saws around. And uh, you took a hammer, and it wasn't a ball peen, but it had to be have some rounded area. That expands metal when you hammer on it. And this would have that same action onto your blade. And so it expands that metal and changes it, makes it not run good. When it doesn't run good, if it wants to dive or go up, uh, then that causes stresses to the blade. Uh, again, that's the reason to have a, uh, a good roller guide that's in good shape. I carry a little straight edge of some type, uh, just a little ruler thing, and I'll, I'll lay it on there and I can look at that um, and see, okay, we've got a good straight um, roller guide there. That one's brand new. But this is one <laughs> that a customer gave us somewhere. And, and you can see you don't even have to put a, put a guide on it and push it up against this back flange. That thing is worn. Um, I'm going to say over, not quite an eighth, but well over a sixteenth out here on this edge. That roller guide has been worn out uh, for months, and I've seen them like that. I've seen them people with roller guides just flopping on their, their meal and sawing uh, amazingly. Sometimes I don't know how they saw it at all, but they did saw. Uh, there's also in this, uh, when we show a close-up of this, there is a cut right here in this roller guide where the blade, this roller guide stopped turning, probably because it's so worn out, and uh, the, the blade cut a groove in that. If you ever have cracking in the back of your blade, it's probably because something is rubbing it on the back, and that's, that's real important. And, uh, but, but if this roller guide stops, it doesn't take uh, but just a minute. I'm talking you know, 30 to 60 seconds, you can cut a groove here, and you're probably well on the way to ruining that blade. And that's amazing. If this roller guide stops, I've seen them have flat places, uh, a sixteenth flat, because it stops and just rolls, rubs right across the top of this uh, blade here, and it'll have a flat spot right there. Now you really got a hammering action once it starts rolling again. So you just want to look at that, that roller guide when you come up to it, or roll the wheel and see it roll, and uh, and, and see that it's in good shape. But that's what your roller guides are up here doing. And so if they're beating against it, you got problems. If they're worn out, uh, if they're tapered, it's gonna cause diving and you can't control the blade. And the whole purpose of a roller guide is to guide the blade, to guide it um, parallel with these bumps. So when it's pushing straight across, if it's tilted down, it's gonna dive down. If it's tilted up, it's gonna go up. If it's worn out, you can't keep it right either way. So, uh, and, and we're, it's all about putting less stress into that blade. So the less stress you can put in that, that blade, the longer life. And so keeping everything in tip top shape gives you longer life. And I don't want you to think that you gotta change these every day or two days or every month even, but just watch them. If you're sawing very little, you may not change them in two years. If you're sawing every day, 10 hours a day, you may change them in four to six months. So it's just something you need to watch. I did want to say one more thing about the roller guide. I mentioned the, the clamp type guide where it actually uh, holds the blade. You're actually holding the blade. These roll so it causes less friction. Holding the blade 
Um, it may have its application in resaw and some things from time to time, but holding that blade um, uh, it, it's going to cause friction. It's just what it does. If you're in a very short, that's why I mentioned resaw, if you're in a very short uh, uh, area that you're cutting, you know you're only cutting four or six inches, and maybe you can get by by just kind of staying on both sides of that and leaving a little bit of clearance. But what we experienced, and we've had, I would say, hundreds of people change their roller, uh, change two roller guides where they had the clamp type, sandwich type guide, we call them, um, is it, it gives you less friction with this roller guide. That's, again, it's about causing less friction. It builds up. We build stress into the blade, and then the second, third, fourth running, it pops. And that's because we're building stress. But a clamp guide, uh, sometimes are hard to get adjusted just perfectly. We're talking thousands a lot of times and putting a feeler gauge in or something. It's hard to get that thing adjusted right and, and it's easy to build stress by causing it to rub or trying to hold it. If you hold this blade um, on both sides and try to force it into the right direction, you will build up tremendous friction and it causes problems. And that's why people in the saw milling, where they're cutting logs especially, and in many times even in the resaw situations, we've had them change out whole multi-heads to the roller guys. Uh, all these things are, you know, sometimes they don't seem like big deals, but they're very important in prolonging the life of your blade.